Hello, my name is Judd Smith. I'm a ranger with Georgia Department of Natural Resources, State Parks and Historic Sites Division. I want to show you this to start out with, and most of us are familiar with this. This is the iconic baseball cap. This one actually dates to our 85th anniversary a few years ago, 2016. We're coming up on our 90th anniversary of Georgia State Parks next year in 2021. But this hat serves as a purpose to give you an idea of the type of thing that most of us are familiar with when somebody says the word cap or hat. We think about the iconic baseball cap. But down through the centuries, hats have changed a great deal over time. Some for fashion, some because of the military and the uses in war. So I'm gonna show you a few hats down that came down through the centuries. And I'm gonna start with the tricorn. The tricorn is the hat that most of us are familiar with from the American Revolution. This hat was actually worn all through the 18th century, the 1700s. It has three corners, therefore it's called a tricorn. And it was used uh, primarily as a civilian hat, but it was also used by the military. The military called them cocked hats because oftentimes where this one has kind of a perfect triangle, they would offset the front here brim because a soldier would be using his musket and if it's moving up here you don't want it banging across the top of the hat so this is a tricorn and again this was used all through the 18th century next hat i want to talk to you about was used by the military and it's still used and you might recognize i don't have an actual hat but i have a picture of one this is called a shako the shako most people now would equate it with a drum major or a band uh, some military academies still use them but this was the uh, part of the dress uniform of the military and the uniform itself of the military in the early 1800s around 1858 they came out with what they call the model 1858 forage cap now this is a civil war reproduction uh, if you'll notice it has this kind of floppy floppy part to it sort of flops over and this was a fatigue cap it was really designed for use while they were out foraging for supplies so they called it a forage cap this one has cross sabers on it denoting that this hat is worn by somebody in the cavalry back in the 1860s during the civil war time if you saw a hat that had crossed cannons barrels on it it would be artillery and if you saw a bugle that would be infantry Later on, the infantry changed its, its logo or their symbol from the bugle to crossed rifles. So you may see those, but that would be after the Civil War. So this would be a forage cap that would have been used in the Civil War time period and up through um, the uh, 1860s. Another hat that was very popular during the Civil War, and this came from Europe, and this is called a kepi. The kepi is designed and it looks a little bit like the forage cap but it has more of a form to it the, for, the forage cap is kind of floppy and doesn't have much form this has a lot more form to it and this would have been used uh, by soldiers on both sides during the civil war but it's based on a french pattern it's called a kepi it's k-e-p-i pronounced kepi and it is a um design like i said from the french and it was a uh useful uh military uh, hat of its era so that's another example of the type of hat you might have seen again it has a liner it has a leather brim and it has kind of a form to it that the forge cap doesn't have so again this is another example of a civil war era hat now during the civil war a lot of soldiers did not wear regulation uniforms for one reason or another if you were in the confederate army a lot of times supplies and things like that were hard to get so they would wear hats that were from the house, things that they brought from home, hats that were comfortable. This hat is not super comfortable and it's not going to keep rain and the elements, keep your neck from being sunburned, keep water off of you like some of these other hats I'm about to show you would. One of them, this is called the slouch hat. It's a slouch hat. It's just sort of a kind of a wood, a woolen piece of, of felt that has been formed in the shape of a hat. This would have been used for agricultural purposes, uh, work, guys working in the fields, and, and this would have also been used by Civil War soldiers uh, because it is a, um, an effective way to keep the rain and the elements off of your head and your sun off your neck. This is 
what a lot of people call a beehive hat. It's called a beehive hat because it has this shape that looks, the crown looks a lot like a beehive. But this one, um, again, is a little fancier than my, than my wool, just my wool slouch hat. This one actually has a liner. Um, it's a finished hat and finished hats were a little more expensive. And this is the kind of thing that you would see a milliner make. A milliner makes hats or a hatter. And there's an old story about uh, people being called mad as a hatter when someone is a euphemism for someone who is who has uh, lost their mental faculties they say they're mad as a hatter back then when they made hats they used mercury to help create and form the felt of the hats to make the hats and it was poisonous uh, Lewis Carroll's uh, 1865 book the uh, Alice in Wonderland excuse me uh, uses a character called the Mad Hatter and that's where it comes from so if you ever hear that term that's where it comes from another hat that was used and popular in the 18, 1800s is what they call a stovepipe hat and this one is called a stovepipe hat because the crown looks kind of like the stove the pipe that comes out of a cast iron uh, Ben Franklin style stove so you can kind of see this Abraham Lincoln is, is famous for the pictures of him wearing the high, the real tall stovepipe hat. This one's a little shorter, but it gives you that idea of what a stovepipe hat would look like. And again, most of these are made out of felt. Uh, the, the more expensive ones would have, would have been made out of beaver felt. But these are very, um, very um, sturdy hats and they will um, hold up to the elements pretty well. So a lot of soldiers will wear, like I said, civilian style hats. Uh, in place of the more the more regulation kepis and things like that. I'm going to move on now to the early 1900s when we went into World War I. And this is not necessarily a hat, but it's a helmet. And this is the model 1917 helmet. If you'll notice, it has this kind of a crown. It's pretty heavyweight metal. And it's designed to look like a hat that was used by the British called the Brody helmet. And if you see a picture of a doughboy during World War I, this is kind of the iconic, the iconic helmet that they wore. They did wear these all the way up to World War II. The United States Army was using these all the way up until the beginnings of World War II when they shifted it and changed it to a much more protective because it helps protect the head and the, ne the neck area, the back, than the 1917. This is called the M1. And this helmet was used all the way up until the 1980s by the United States military. This one has a good steel uh, top. This has a, camo a camouflaged uh, netting on it. And again, this would have been used by the soldiers during World War One, or excuse me, World War II, Korea, all the way through Vietnam and into the early 1980s when it was shifted to what we use now, which is made out of a Kevlar material and not steel. This is pretty heavy, but it does give good protection and a lot more protection to the back of the head and the neck than say this one. So those are some of our unique hats that have been used throughout the years. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. I hope you have a nice day.